Hi there, and welcome to this course, Restaurant Menu Design. The design of a menu can make or break a diner's experience. Menus come in all shapes and sizes, with folds and without. There is also a wide variety in styles, all depending on the type of restaurant that you are designing a menu for. In this course, we will show you how to design a restaurant menu template, the design process, and all through to the printing and packaging phase. We will start by showing you how to edit an existing template from an extensive library from Envato Elements. This is great to see how other restaurants menu design templates are set up. We will move on to designing a simple one sheet menu template, how to set up the essentials and what you need to use for your design to be easy to edit. Last, we will show you how to set up and design a trifold brochure menu design template. Trifold projects can be scary to set up because of defaults. And here we will show you an easy way to do this that can help you in any of your future projects. Let's get started. Hi there, and welcome back. Before diving into the course, we'll take a look at the software and the assets we will be using. The software of choice for this course is Adobe InDesign. This is a page design software that is perfect for laying out and mixing images and typography. You can download a trial version from the Adobe website. You are more than welcome to use a software of your choice, but keep in mind that some of the options might not be available. Now let's take a look at the design assets uh, on Envato Elements. Here they offer many assets containing images, videos, fonts, and many more. You're sure to find anything you need in their extensive library. I will search here for restaurant menu design. Let's select Adobe InDesign so we get a template that works with that software and we can find a template to download and this is the one that we will be using on the first lesson. Here I have it downloaded as a zip file. Double click to unzip it. We can delete this. And then I have two other folders for my menu cards and the trifold brochure. Let's open the template folder and here we will find the links the actual file in two sizes. Let's open the menu card. Here I have the font I will be using, Carters. I've already installed this font. I have some paper textures here. And all of this will be linked in the description below. For the trifle brochure, we'll be using three images and Scarlet Serif. And here I can show you how to install it. So select the two files, open font book, and drag the two files into the font book window. And that's it. Perfect. So now we're ready to get started. I'll see you in the next lesson. Hi there, and welcome back to this course. For this lesson, be sure to download the template that is linked in the description below. We will use this template to show you how easy and helpful it can be to use a template when you're in a hurry. So double click into the folder that we downloaded and unzipped. Here you will find a help PDF and here usually the designer will include all the details pertaining to the template. So any of the fonts, the sizes, and sometimes even a how to guide uh, to edit in their template. Let's head over to the InDesign folder. We have all the links here. Let's go back, select the DIN A3 size. And I am working with Adobe CC, so I will be opening the first file. You will get a warning about the links. So for now, just click OK, and then we'll link them to the file. The second warning we'll get is the font. So because we'll be using different fonts, we'll be changing the fonts. We don't have to worry about using the same fonts that are being used on this template. So for now, let's click on close. Head over to window, open links. We will link all the images here. And you can see that all of the files that have a question mark at the end are missing the link. So select either the first or the last file, press shift and select the last or first file. So that way we can select all of the files at the same time. Click on the relink button. Let's navigate to where 
the template folder that we downloaded is. So for me, it will be downloads. Here it is. InDesign, click on links. And the only thing that you need to make sure is to go down here and make sure that search for missing links in this folder is activated. So what this will do is will it will link all of the other missing links to these images if the files are here. So I'll click on the first one and open. Click OK. And perfect, we've relinked all of the missing links. Let's move this to the side. So let's navigate here on the pages. We have our layers and we have our image background here. I'll lock the images and background layers so we can work on the text. Open the paragraph styles. And here we can see that we have all the different styles that are being used on this template. And this is what will make it easy for us to edit. If you don't have the paragraph styles open, head over to Window, Styles, Paragraph Styles. Select the text tool from the tool panel or T on your keyboard and click on any of the text boxes on the template. And you will notice that the paragraph styles panel will change as soon as you select different styles of text on the file. If I click on starters and then head over to the options panel, you will see that the font being used is befitting, which we don't have activated. And if you head to the paragraph styles panel, there is a plus sign next to menu area, which is a style that's applied to it. That means that there was an initial style given to the text box, which was later changed to something else. So if we want to overwrite everything and start from the beginning, press option on your keyboard and click on the style that will reset it. So I will do the same for the next two sections. Now that we have that changed, double click on menu.area and that will open the paragraph styles options. Here we can change anything regarding typography. Click on the basic character formats and let's say we want to change the weight of the font. Here I'll choose thin italic just make sure that you have the preview box checked so you can see the changes. The style will change anywhere it was applied. Click OK here. And let's just adjust these other sections, text boxes. Select them, press Option and click, and that will override any extra style that was applied to them. Let's go back into the paragraph style options. Now let's say we want a different font. We'll use Carter's and that instantly changes it. Click OK. Let's head down here. There are more sections here, so just select all six of them. Press Shift to select multiple text boxes. Now press Option and click on Menu Area. And now that's changed. Let's select here this text box. And here, the styles, description, and dish main are being used. Double click on the description style on the paragraph styles panel. And you can make even more changes here. Let's say you want a different weight, different size, different letting to adjust to the size that you, um, to whatever new size that you want. And that's not a problem. If you're happy with that, click OK. If you don't want the changes, just click Cancel. The colors work in a similar way. Open the swatches panel. If you don't have it open, head over to Windows, Color, Swatches. And let's select Corporate Color 2. Double click. Make sure you have the preview box checked. And as I move the slider, I'll see the colors change on the template. So let's say I want red. Click OK. If I'm not feeling it, I can press Command Z and go back a step. Let's say we want to change the name of the dishes. That one is using background dark gray. Move the slider and we can see the background also changing. That means that there is an overlay on the background that's using the same color. And again, if I'm not into that, click Cancel. If I like it, click OK. Now let's look at how the dishes section is built. Press W on your keyboard and you will be able to get a preview of the template. And if you press again, you will be able to see basically the behind the scenes of how the template was constructed. 
So here we can see that it's divided into two columns and five rows. So one column for the dishes, the other column for the price. That means that this is a table. So anywhere we move this text box, the whole table will move. To edit the contents, you can, you can do as you would normally do. Just select the text and write your own. If you happen to make a mistake and for some reason the name of the dish has the description style, select the name of the dish, head over to the paragraph styles panel and click on dish main, and that will bring it back to the original template. Let's look at here at a different text box. If we click here, we have trifle name restaurant small. If we override that by pressing option and click, we can see that the color is white. So here we can change it to black and that will also center it. But if we want it flush to the left, then press command Z and that will go back to the beginning again. One common problem is that you might not have as many items as they have on the menu or maybe you have more than these. So you have the option to add more rows on the table or take them off. For that, let's open our tables panel, head over to window, type in tables, table. And you can click here to add one more row and that will automatically add it. Add your copy. Use the paragraph styles to style the contents. Dish main, price number. If you want to experiment, you can also use any of the other styles. Just make sure that it's consistent throughout your menu. Let's say if you want to make any small changes, double click, for example, in the description. You can experiment here with the basic character formats, the size, letting, tracking, or with a character color. The only thing that we're missing is the stroke that goes above and below the dish. Select the cell, head over to the options bar, and you can see here a small diagram of a cell. It will let you know the stroke weight. Here, for example, it is not. So we can select the cell and then copy and paste. That would be an easy way to do it. Or we can guesstimate the size of the stroke. So for me, for example, here, the stroke could be 0.5 points. And you just have to make sure that on the diagram, you're only choosing the sides that you want the stroke to be in. So for example, the last cell only needs to have a top stroke. Set the stroke weight to 0.5 points and you're set. Let's check here the restaurant name. Double click on this side of the text box to make it fit to the contents. This has name restaurant A3 big style on it. That's good. And now we can change the background. Head over to the layers panel, lock the text and images layer and unlock the background. And here we can see we have this texture on the background. If you like a different texture, we can change this. I'll replace this with one of the textures that I will be using in one of the future lessons. Let's head over to menu card, paper textures, textures, and I will select 116. Drag and drop into InDesign. Press A on your keyboard for the direct selection tool. Press R to rotate and hold down shift as you resize the image to resize it evenly. So now we have a different texture here. Using the direct selection tool, select the image, command C. Select the frame, right click, paste into. That will paste the image into that frame. And now we can play around with the images that we linked at the beginning of this lesson. The images are part of a bigger group. So what you can do here is use the selection tool, but double click on each of the images that you want to move. And that's because there are compositions within compositions. 
double click and we can move this a little bit lower. And that's it. This is how you edit a restaurant menu template. If you ever need any kind of template, be it restaurant template or brochures, marketing by default, Envato Element is a really great resource for that. They have a big library, many assets that you can choose from, and they're very easy to use. So now that we've shown you how to edit a template, we can start creating our own. I'll see you on the next lesson. Hi there. Welcome back. Before we start with this course, there are a few tips and tricks we think you could take in consideration before designing your menu template. There are a few key elements you must have in your menu template or design. Name of the restaurant, location, and phone number. These are important if people are taking menus or trifold menus home, especially if you're designing for a takeaway restaurant. Make sure that the menu contents are divided into sections and with prices, this will ensure that everything is nicely laid out and separated into categories. Optional elements are opening hours. This is helpful for takeaway restaurants as well as social media handles. Social media is a great tool for marketing and sharing and it is becoming increasingly popular to attract other customers. So this is a big plus as a template. These are the more important elements that you need to have, especially the top three. This is just basic information that will help customers get in touch with the restaurant and be able to order. Let's take a look at a few tips and tricks when designing a menu layout. Use grids for the layout. Designing a menu requires order and organization. So long blocks of text can be hard to read and digest. So it is a great idea to divide the content in sections. Try to see if you can split up the text into different categories. It will also help if you have clear demarcation lines or a gap to make clear where the category starts and ends. For example, in this first menu, there are eight categories and each section is divided by the title of the next category and a stroke at the top and the bottom. On this second example, if you're playing with colors or if you have a theme, you can play with different borders, colors, and style. This trifold is dividing sections into the different panels and the two outside panels have two different categories as well. This also comes in handy if you have special dishes of the day or special drinks. So any suggestions that you have for the restaurant and something that will help the customer decide what they'll like to eat. Next up is enhance the menu with visuals. So you use illustrations and use photography, but make sure that these are really good quality. Depending on your restaurant, illustrations can evoke a certain mood. Line illustrations can add a playfulness and an easygoing vibe, like this first menu. And because these illustrations are on a black background, it makes it look like it's drawn on a chalkboard. So instantly it just gives you that rustic feel. So always keep in mind that you're using really good quality illustrations that fit your restaurant. Photographs are another great way to apply visuals to your menu layout. Invest in good quality photos of items on your menu, and this will help let customers know what to expect. If there is a dish the restaurant is known for, maybe that will be a smart idea to put a picture of that dish. And it is a way to tell the customers, look, this is our tastiest dish here, the most delicious, the most ordered, and that's a smart way to bring them in. Next up is use funky fonts. Spice up your layout with different fonts. If you're going for something classic and elegant, it's okay to tone this down. But if you have a theme in your restaurant, why not go all out? This retro diner is using typical fonts from the 50s that just help enhance the mood. That can be just enough to make every piece in the restaurant just work together nicely. This trifold menu is using a font that adds depth to the design. You can go crazy with a style like on the diner menu, but for this one, just something small like adding a shadow will add a depth of field and just something special to the trifold. And last, we have used different backgrounds. Backgrounds and paper choices are often overlooked in menu layouts. So by applying a background, you can add another dimension and evoke even more feelings through the design. You have two options here. You can either use an image as a background or you can use an actual paper. So for example, this watercolor background helps enhance a romantic feel on the menu. So for this, you can either add a watercolor image or you can also customize white paper with your own watercolor design 
and then you can print on it. So every copy of the menu that you have will have a very different watercolor design as a background. This trifold brochure is a great example of mimicking a vintage scratch paper. If you want a rustic or grunge-like feel, a scratch old paper texture can help you achieve that. And again, you can use a textured image or perhaps you can head to the art store and you'll find different papers that you can print your menu design on. Now that we've walked you through the essential elements on a menu card and a few tips and tricks, it's time for us to get started on the design. So I'll see you in the next lesson. Hi there, and welcome back to this course. In this lesson, you will learn how to set up an InDesign document and how you can organize your layers to keep a tidy file. So let's look at our files here again. Double click on menu card. We are using Carters as a font and paper textures as our background. Head over to InDesign. Click on create new. Set the name to menu card. We need to change the units to millimeters. Let's head over to print here at the top. Select A4 and now we can change the units. So change from PyCast to millimeters. Uncheck facing pages. Set the column numbers to three. Column gutter, which is the space between the columns to five millimeters. Set the margins to 15 millimeters. And set the bleed to three millimeters. Now the bleeds are going to come in handy when you're sending a file to a professional printer. The bleed is the line that goes beyond the edge of um, where the sheet of paper will be trimmed. And this is just to ensure that if you are using an image that is going off the page, that when this page is trimmed, you won't have any white gaps around it. So three millimeters is the rule. If you're printing a file from home, from your, uh, you know, your office printer or your personal printer, then you probably won't need this because smaller printers don't print all the way to the edge of the page. Click on create. And here we have it. So this is our bleeds, our columns, our gutters. Let's bring up the rules. You can bring up the rules by pressing command R on your keyboard. From the vertical rule on the left side, drag a guide and place it right in the middle of the page at 105 millimeters. This will help us to have the option to create either three, a three column layout or a two column layout. Select the square tool by pressing M on your keyboard or from the tool panel. And what I want to do here is just measure the gutter and uh, add some gutter to this new guide that I just created. So let's move it over, place it in the center, two more guides, and there we have it. We have two columns on top of our three columns on the page. To keep our files organized, we will use layers. So head over to the layers panel, double click on layer one, rename this as background, create a new layer here, and layer two will be content. And here we can hide and view the layers. I'll use the rectangle tool here to draw a square, and you can see that we can also move objects in between the layers from transferring one square to the other here on the right side. And that's it for this initial setup for our InDesign menu card template. On the next lesson, we will set up our color swatches and paragraph styles. These two elements will help us edit the template easily. I'll see you there. Hi there, and welcome back to this course. In this lesson, we will learn how to add color swatches and paragraph styles to add to each section of our menu card template. Let's take a look. On the file that we set up on the previous lesson, create a text box using the text tool from the tools panel, or you can press T on your keyboard. For my menu card template, I chose the name Bar Isabel. Head over to the options panel and use the center align button to center align the text. Select the font Carters. Set the size to 60 points, maybe, let's see, maybe a little bit bigger. 
that looks good. Open the swatches panel. If you don't have it open, head over to Window Color Swatches. Here I'll add a new color swatch. Let's delete the other colors that we have already here so we don't mix them up. So select the blue color, hold down shift, and then select the, the top of the first color that you want to delete. So you can delete everything as a group. Click OK here. Double click on black copy. Here I just want to make sure that I have the color applied to the name of the restaurant or the bar and then use the selection tool so that way all the changes that we make on the swatches panel will be able to see live. So get out of the text box and double click on black copy and here you can see we can see the changes live. Make sure that you have the preview box checked. So here I'm just looking for an orange color that goes just a little bit to towards the yellow side, not too red. That's perfect. Click OK. Open the Paragraph Styles panel by going to Window, Style, Paragraph Styles. Using the text tool, select the text box. You can choose anywhere, but just select the text that you want to make a style. Head over to the Paragraph Styles panel and click on Add a new style. Double click on Paragraph Style 1. Let's rename this to restaurant name. And here under style settings that we can see that everything that we have already set up for the name of the restaurant is already as a style setting. So we're starting with that. It's picking those settings up from the text box. So this is a very easy way to set up paragraph styles rather than going in and setting everything up blindly. Click OK. The advantage of using this font is that it has the option to use shadow, black shadow, and drop shadow. So there are shadows behind the regular option that you can add or you can just use the regular um, by itself. But here I want to add some depth of field, so I will add one of the shadows. In order to do that, we need to create a new layer. So I'll add a new layer and rename it content shadow. Place it under the content, but above the background. Select the text box, copy or command C on your keyboard, right click, select paste in place and make sure that you're pasting this on the content shadow layer. Here we can hide the content. Right now to set up the shadow, I want to lock the content layer. Double click here, select shadow and I want the shadow to be black. So change that on the swatches panel and we have the shadow separately on a different text box, but behind the text. Now let's say you want to change the color, the this orangey yellow color, lock the content shadow, head over to the swatches panel, press J on your keyboard. And when you select a text box and then head over to change the color, it will change the color of the actual text box and not the text. So press J on your keyboard that will activate the type color. You can see that here on the, on the fill on the swatches panel, there is a T there. So double click on the color and simply move the slider to adjust to the color that you want. I'm happy with this yellow, so I will click cancel. Using the text tool, create another text box under the name of the restaurant. Here I will add lounge and bar dinner menu, center align the text, select Carters. And here I just want to make sure that I'm selecting all caps. So that way it is already saved on the paragraph styles. So if a client wants to change it, then it will already be set to all caps. I just want to set the size to 14 points. That looks pretty good. Maybe it just needs to come a little bit lower and head over to the paragraph styles panel. Make sure that you have the text tool activated in the text box. Add a new paragraph style, 
rename this to restaurant tag and click OK. Now let's set up the sections of the menu. Using the text tool, I'm adding starters, choosing all caps. I want this to be Carter's regular and the size 18 points. Head over to the swatches panel. Let's add some color here. And I'm leaning towards a turquoise green here. Maybe just a little bit darker. Click OK. Activate the text with a text tool. Create a new style on the paragraph styles panel. Rename this to menu subtitle. We can see the style settings. Just double check. It's always good to double check that you have the right style settings and there's nothing extra in there. If you want to change any of those settings, head over to the basic character formats and you can change the size, the letting, the font style, the family, anything you like. Click OK. And here I want to do the same thing as the title of the restaurant. I want to have a shadow in the background. So right click copy, lock the content layer, head over to the content shadow, right click paste in place. Using the text tool, select the text, change the style from regular to shadow, head over to the swatches panel, select black and you're all set. Using the text tool, create another text box. And now we're going to create the menu items. Select the all caps option, Carter's regular, and create a new style in the paragraph styles panel. Rename the style name to menu item. Click OK. Create a new style. This will be for the price. Head over to indents and spacing. Select the alignment to be right. All of the prices will be aligned to the right side of the table. Let's set the style name to menu price. Click OK. There we have it. So we have a menu price and a menu item. I've set this in two separate text boxes. We'll set them up um, on a table later. We can also add an address at the bottom of the menu. So using the text to create a small text box at the bottom of the menu. Let's set the address here. Center align. Set Carter's as the font. And because it's the address, we'll set this to a smaller font size, a 10. And also activate the all caps option. Head over to the paragraph styles panel, add a new style. Rename the style to restaurant address. Click OK. And now I think I want to break up the menu with a few fun either announcements. Maybe we can have a menu of the day or gluten free, dairy free options, something like that. So using the text tool, create a text frame the size of one of the one third columns. Here I'll have gluten free and vegetarian. Set the font to Carter's. And I want the size to be bigger, maybe 24 points. I wanted to use the whole uh, width of the column. Set the all caps, no hyphenate. And I want the same thing, have a shadow behind it. So let's set a color here first. Here I'm leaning towards something red to have some contrast against the, the yellow, orange, and the turquoise. So that looks good. Click OK. Select the text box, right click, copy, lock the content layer, paste this in the content shadow layer, set the style to shadow, set the shadow to black, and there we have it. Here, I'm just going to unlock the content shadow layer so I can move some things around. For example, the I want another menu section title. 
select both text boxes, press Option and drag down. Lock the content layer, delete the content shadow. I'll change the, the content section title to drinks. Here I just want to add one more color and cyan maybe will work better. That's a good complementary color. So set that to cyan, select the text box. Here I just want to make sure that the red has the same style name as the other colors. So double click here and check the name with color value box. Click OK. Let's put this paragraph styles in order. So we have first the restaurant name at the top, the tag later. The only thing that we have missing is the text on the side. So let's create a new style here. Select the text that is meant to be on the side, create a new style and name it menu side text. And let's put that at the bottom. Let's bring the menu subtitle up just so everything is in order. So here we just need to add the shadow for the drinks. Select the text box, command C on your keyboard, lock the content layer, head over to the content shadow, right click, paste in place. And here we just need to change the style to shadow and to black. And if I have both of these layers locked, of course, I can't move anything. So make sure that you have either your layers locked or unlocked, depending on what you're doing. That's it for this lesson. We cover how to add color swatches and how to add different styles um, on your paragraph styles panel. These two things are very, very essential if you're planning on distributing your templates as assets to other people. It will make it very easy for them to edit and personalize them, change the colors, change the fonts, and add their own spin to the menu. In the next lesson, we will cover how to use tables in InDesign so we can start adding sections and menu items, dishes, and descriptions. So I'll see you there. Hi there, and welcome back to this course. Many designers are not aware that InDesign has the ability to create tables. So in this lesson, we will touch on how to create tables and how you can modify them to what you need. Tables are very useful when you want to set up contents pages, financial statements, or anything really that requires multiple columns and rows. So let's take a look. Let's unlock the layers and move some of these items away. Press Command T to activate the menu item text box. Let's get rid of the content. Head over to table, insert table. And here's where we can dictate how many rows and columns we want. So body rows are the ones that go horizontal and columns go vertical. For this menu, I want four body rows and two columns. So the program already inserts the table into the text box. Let's open our table panel, head over to window, Type in tables, table, select the whole table. And here on the table panel, you can change the size, the amount of uh, rows if you want to add more or you want to take some out. We have the at least option, which means that you can change the either the height or the width of the cell to be at least, for example, 10 millimeters. And that will modify it to be at least that size. Here I'll select the right side column and this column will be designated for the price. So since I don't need that big of a column, I'll change the width to 10 millimeters. You can also modify this with the selection tool. For example, here I want to make the column where the name of the dishes will be. I want to make that wider. So double click on the vertical line that is between the two columns and drag towards the right. Perfect. Now this table is outlined with a black stroke all around um, pretty much every cell. To modify that, select the whole table, head to the options bar, 
and here you will see a diagram of the of a table. It won't be exactly the same amount of rows and columns, but it will be a diagram of a simplified table. Here you have the option to select or deselect the sides of a cell and the sides of a table. So in this case, I want to select all of the edges and set the stroke color to none. And there we have it. So now we don't have any strokes around. Now let's say that you want strokes only in between the cells. So select only the middle stroke and set the color to black. And that's how you have strokes in between the cells. So I'll press Command Z here to go back a step. Now it's time to add some content. So since we don't have any content, we'll use some Lauren Ipsum. Press T on your keyboard or select the text tool from the toolbar. Draw a text box outside the page. Right click and select fill with placeholder text. And here we'll just copy and paste um, some fake names for the dishes. I want to style this already on the menu item style so we don't have to change things once they're already into the table. So let's select here, Command C and Command V to paste the text. And we will add some random prices here. Here I'll select the whole column Head over to Paragraph Styles and select the menu price and that will style it instantly. Perfect. Another option that the tables option gives us is to alter the inside from all around the cell. So for example, let's go here to the tables panel, select the table. I will select the first column only. And let's head over to the bottom of the table panel. Here we can change the inset of how deep into the cell you want the text to be. You can also change the position of the text if you want it to appear right at the top or right in the middle of the cell at the bottom, or if you have more text to be spread out through the whole cell. For this course, I want it to be aligned to the center. Now I will select the price column and we can do the same thing. You can do this, you can change these options as a table, I'm just doing it uh, separately so you can see the options. And that's it, this is how you add tables in InDesign. They are really, really useful if you're trying to set up, you know, a menu template where people have to input the name of their dishes and they want to change them. This will keep an even space throughout the whole design. Tables also come in useful when you're creating contents pages, financial statements, um, you know, there are, there are many uses for them. Since we have all of our elements ready, in the next lesson, we will finish adding up the rest of the sections and complete the design. I'll see you there. Hi there, and welcome back to this course. In this lesson, we will be adding the rest of the content to the menu template. You will learn how to create an effective layout and we will put into practice the lessons that we learned at the beginning of this course. Let's take a look. So here I'll just copy and paste different parts of the placeholder text so that way it looks like it's a little bit uh, more real. Select the line tool from the toolbar and we'll draw a line on the first two columns. I want to set the stroke color to black and change the style to dotted. Set the stroke size to one point. And I just want to lower this a little bit so that way there is a, a real contrast between the name of the restaurant and the rest of the menu. If you're looking to align things or have the same distance between elements, Using the smart guides is a good choice. If you don't have them activated, head over to view, grids and guides, smart guides or command U. And that will give you um, the green lines you were seeing. Duplicate this stroke by pressing option and move it towards the right. I just want to resize this so that it fits the one column on the right. Select the name of the section 
uh, both text boxes and press Command B. Check the Ignore Text Wrap option. Let's open the text wrap, head over to Window Text Wrap. Select the wrap around bounding box here and set the box to be three millimeters all around. And here's just to make sure that the line uh, or the stroke at the top has the same distance as the second uh, stroke that we will be creating. So press Option, select the stroke and drag down. Let's place this at the bottom of the text wrap. So you can see that visually it's a little bit off. I just want to move this up a notch. That's because of the shadow. The shadow is sitting lower than the regular style of this font. So that's why we need to maybe take it up a notch. Move the table so the top of the table is touching the bottom stroke on the name of the section. Let's zoom out. Move the drinks to the bottom since the drinks are always uh, the last things on the menu. Select all the elements on the menu on the left side. Press Option and drag down. I just want to place this at the bottom, uh, right at the bottom of the table. Now press Shift and the down arrow that will move. What this will do is it will increase the amount it moves down. Instead of just pressing the down arrow without shift, that moves all of the elements just a few pixels at a time. Lock the content shadow layer. Change the name here to salads. On the swatches panel, I'll change the color. And then I'll do the same for the shadow. Keeping it black. Duplicate this again, select everything. I'll move the drinks down. Select everything again. Press Option, drag down so it duplicates. Remember to place it right at the bottom of the table. Press Shift, down arrow, and it will, be, it will move it down. Now let's just do one for items in each section of the menu. So let's say we want to delete one row of the salads. Select the row. I'm getting rid of all the text. Right click, head over to delete, select row, and that will delete one row. If you want to make the text box smaller, double click on the center point of the text box and that will automatically uh, shrink it to the size of the table. So again, let's move this up, press shift, down arrow, perfect. Let's change this to five. And using the placeholder text, we'll just copy and paste items. Change the name of the section. Change the color and make sure that you're also changing the content shadow. Let's delete the drinks here and duplicate all the elements from this last table. Delete the last row. Lock the content shadow. Change, we'll change here drinks to non-alcoholic cocktails. Unlock content shadow, do the same. Here is where the two column is going to come in handy that we um, created at the beginning of this course. The bottom part of this menu template will be dedicated to drinks. But since we have two columns, we can create two subdivisions for the drinks. Select all the items, press shift and click on the table so that way it deselects it and resize this to take only the first column of the two columns we created. Double click on the stroke in between the two columns and drag in so that way it fits the, the first column. Let's double click here on the text box so that way it shrinks. And that's it. Now we can duplicate this to the other side, the second column. So select everything, press Option, and drag towards the right. Here I will just have cocktails. I'll change it on both the content and the content shadow layers. So that's looking, that's looking pretty good. Maybe let's move this up a little bit so we can 
bring everything up and try to make everything fit so we can have some room at the bottom for the address. Duplicate this stroke. We'll add um, a clear delineation from the end of the menu um, and the address. So press Option, drag down and resize this to fit the whole page. So placeholder text for the address. Select everything, head over to the paragraph styles panel and select the restaurant address style. Since the size of the font is a little bit smaller here, it will be good to add some space in between the letters. So set the tracking to 50 and that will give it a little bit more air in between and it will be easier to read. Let's move down this a little bit more. And this is always, it's good to zoom in and out and see what is working and what's not. So, you know, so you can look at the spaces, if they're tight or if they're uh, too airy, if there's too much breathing room, you just tighten things up. Duplicate the stroke on the third column, press option and drag down. We can add this stroke to have a clear delineation too between the menu and we can either have some quotes or specials here on the other side. Extend this down. And here is just a matter of moving things just a few pixels here and there. Duplicate this vertical stroke by pressing option and drag. Resize it to fit the drinks. And I just want to resize the stroke to hit the top of the, the letters. Let's see, maybe just having, maybe just having one stroke at the very top will be enough. Try to also judge this visually, not only mathematically when it comes to spaces, but see what works best. Maybe there are too many elements and just having one stroke here um, for the drinks will be just enough. So that looks much better. Okay, now we can work on this column here on the side. So select the text and duplicate it, dragging down, press option. Make the text box a little bit bigger. Let's see, let's have here, we can have gluten-free and vegetarian options available. So lock that layer, bring up the content shadow layer, and let's do, let's write the same thing. Duplicate this stroke so that way top is separated here from the bottom otherwise there will be too much of a white gap in between let's change the color here to yellow and then we can change also the contents on the top here we can have asks your server for daily specials let's do the same for the content shadow move this a little bit lower Select both text boxes and try to align them. And the last thing that I want to add is a background. So lock both of the content and content shadow layers. Select the background. And navigate to where the paper textures are on your computer. Select textures. I want to select something almost like craft paper, but not too dark. So 129 is looking good. Let's see. Maybe this is a little bit too uh, dark to work with our colors. 129. Select 129. Drop it on the menu template. Now we'll just draw here where I would like the background to go. Press R on your keyboard and rotate this vertically. And here just make sure that the image is touching the bleeds. Maybe it is too strong and it could be, this could be a bit too strong. So let's play with the opacity. And there you have it. This is our final restaurant menu template. We cover how to lay out the menu in, in a nice way so it doesn't look too busy or too empty and how to subdivide the drinks section. In the next lesson, I will show you how you can export files for printing and how you can package files um, as a template so you can distribute it to 
clients or if you want to, for example, sell assets, that is also possible. I'll see you in the next lesson. Hi there and welcome back to this course. In this last lesson of our single menu card template, I will show you how to export a file for professional printing and how you can package a file if you're planning on distributing um, your restaurant menu as a template. In InDesign, head over to File, Export, or Command E on your keyboard. Set the name of your file in the format to Adobe PDF Print. Under Adobe PDF Preset, select the Press Quality option. On the left side menu, select Marks and Bleeds. And here I just want to make sure to use the Document Bleeds settings and the Crop Marks so the printer knows where to cut the page. Click on Export. Head over to where you saved the file, the location. For me, it will be in the Menu Card folder. And here there's a Menu Card PDF. So let's take a look here at the file. So here you can see that the background image is extending over the edge of the page and to the crop marks. So those are our bleeds. That's what the, the bleeds are useful for. So when the printer cuts the page, you are ensured that there won't be any white space around the menu. So if you're printing this from your office printer or from home, you will see a white around the edge. And that's because smaller printers are not made to print all the way um, outside the edge of the page. So you either, you can do that or you can print it without a background or maybe if you're using actual craft paper or a colored paper, that might be another option. So that's for printing. And now if you want to distribute your restaurant menu as a template, you need to package the file in order to grab the right images and the right fonts. You just have to make sure that the fonts that you're using are distributable and the image that you're using is also free for other people to use. So head over to File, Package, and here on the package window, you will see all of the information. So there are two fonts being used. There is nothing missing, nothing embedded. There is one link found, and that will be the background image and its use as an RGB color space. So just make sure that everything is click on package. Make sure that you save the file first. And here you can choose where you want to save the folder. So here I'll put menu card template folder. Make sure that copy fonts and copy linked graphics is checked. And also make sure that you're including an IDML file. Here you don't have to include a PDF, um, but I'll leave it as is. The IDML file will make sure that there will be two InDesign files. So one will be a file that you can open in the current version of InDesign that you're working on. So for me, that will be Adobe InDesign CC. But there are other people who might be using CS5, CS6, and the IDML file will ensure that they can open the InDesign file. So for them, they will have to open the IDML file. And here we have our template folder. There is a menu card PDF. There are two uh, InDesign files, INDD and IDML. And then we have the links, which is the background and the document fonts. So this is how you create a single card menu template. In the second part of this course, you will learn how to create a trifold menu. There we will show you how to set up a trifold document and we will put into use what we will learn in this first part of the course. I'll see you there. Hi there, and welcome back to this course, how to create a restaurant menu template. In this second part of the course, we'll be creating a trifold menu. Right now, we will learn how to set up a trifold document in InDesign, and then we will apply everything we learned in the previous lessons to create a different style menu. Let's take a look. A trifold brochure is a page containing three panels per side. Two of the panels are the same width, while one panel is slightly narrower to accommodate for the fold. Besides this menu, a trifold brochure is great for marketing purposes because you can pack a lot of information and divide it through the six panels um, while telling a good story. So the way we're going to create this in InDesign is we'll be creating a file with six pages and then we will 
alter the pages using the master pages panel. I've created an equation chart that you can follow and then you can adjust to whatever page size you're using. So for this trifold menu, we will be using a letter size. And I have created this chart here to explain easily how we're going to set it up. So a letter size is 279.4 millimeters. Um, and we will divide this by three because it's the number of the panels. That will result in 93.13 millimeters. I mentioned two panels are the same size and we will be adding one millimeter to both of these panels. So plus one, that will be the panel A and that will result in 94.13 millimeters. And then we have a smaller panel and that will be the panel that folds in. So for that, we're going to take two millimeters and that will be 91.13 millimeters. That will be panel B. So what we need to see on our master pages will be uh, BAA and AAB. Okay, so let's start setting these up. Click on create new document, head over to print, select letter size. Let's change the name here to trifold menu. Change the units to millimeters. Set the orientation to horizontal and let's set the width to 94.13 millimeters. Let's leave the height as is, uncheck facing pages and add six pages. Set the margins to 10 millimeters, bleeds to three, and click on create. Head over to the pages panel. If you, if you don't have it open, head over to window pages and double click on a master. Right click on a master, select new master. Based on master A, that means that if we ever, for example, need to change the margins, then B master will also be affected. Head over to width, and here we will change it to 91.13 millimeters, which is the panel that folds in. Right click on B master, select apply master to pages one, comma six. This will change the master pages to those two pages. On the warning window, click use master page size for both pages. And here we can see that we have B, A, A, and A, A, B. One to three is the outside panel and four to six is the inside panel. Now we need to merge them uh, together and this will make it easier when you're trying to design the trifold brochure. It will be easier to see what you're doing. So in order for this to happen, head over to the top corner of the pages panel and deactivate allow document pages to shuffle and allow selected spread to shuffle. And now you can move A, page two to one and three to one two and the same here. So we have this divided into essentially two groups. Double click here and you can see that it's already set up. We have the outside panel and the inside panel. Now here, a way just to measure and make sure that we've done it right. Select a, the rectangle tool and draw a rectangle to measure the width of the brochure. And you can see here that panel one compared to panel two and three is narrower. So that's the panel that will fold in. That means that panel three of the first group is the cover of the trifold brochure. When folded, panel two is the back and panel one is the one that folds in. To finish setting up our trifold brochure document, we need to organize some layers. Double click on layer one and rename it to background and images. Click OK. Create a new layer and rename this second layer to content. Click OK. And that's it. We have successfully set up a trifold brochure template completed with layers to keep everything organized. In the next lesson, we will set up color swatches, paragraph styles, and tables so we can start designing our trifold brochure menu template. I'll see you there. Hi there, and welcome back to this course. 
In this lesson, we'll take a look at what we learned previously and apply it to the trifold brochure. We'll select a few colors for the color swatches panel and use the paragraph styles to style the document. Let's take a look. Head over to the swatches panel. If you don't have it open, head over to window, color, swatches. Select the first color, press shift and select the last color. We'll delete these so we can make room for our new colors. Add a new swatch, double click. And here I'm looking for uh, a dark yellowish color, almost like a, like a gold. Click OK. And that's it for our swatches. We'll keep it simple and work with, uh, with the black as well. Open the Paragraph Styles panel by going to Window, Style, Paragraph Styles. Add a new style, double click, and change the style name to Restaurant Name. Select the basic character formats and set the font family to Scarlet. Set the size to 45 points. Now head over to Indents and Spacing. Set the alignment to Center. And one last thing, let's set the case to all caps on the basic character formats option. Click OK. Add a new style. Name it restaurant tag or description. Based on no paragraph style. And here you can see that this is the same format that we used for the previous style. So that saves time when you're creating the styles. Uh, setting it to no paragraph style. Set the size to 12 points, letting to 25, leave the case as all caps, make sure that indents and spacing is center, and click OK. Add a new style, set the name to telephone and address based on no paragraph style. And here I'll, I'll show you the reset to base button. So click on the reset to base button and you will see on the style settings that everything gets erased. So that means that you will be starting to set this style uh, from the default options that InDesign gives you. Head over to basic character formats. And here you can see that all of the settings are as default settings. So this is useful, for example, if you want to be a little bit more meticulous and be sure that your starting with a clean slate. Set the font family to Scarlet. Set the size to 9 points. Tracking to 200. Case all caps. Under indents and spacing, set the alignment to center. And just set the color to paper. Let's just make sure here that restaurant tag or description is also set to paper. And the same for restaurant name. Add a new style, set the name to menu title. Based on no paragraph style, we can reset to base and use the font family Scarlet at 18 points, 25 tracking. Set the case to all caps and under color, select the muted yellow. Create a new paragraph style based on no paragraph style and reset to base. Set the font family to Scarlet at 9 points, 50 tracking, all caps, character color to black, and let's not forget the name, menu item, click OK. Add a new style, menu description, let's reset to base here, font family Scarlet, size 7. We'll add some tracking here since the font size is so small that will help to give it some air in between so it's easier to read. Set the character color to the muted yellow. And that's it. We will add the placeholder text. Select the text tool and draw a text box outside the page. Right click, fill with placeholder text. And I just want to select this and already style it. Menu item. So we can start designing here. 
let's duplicate it placeholder text to the second spread and let's start with the inside menu let's start with the first panel select the text tool and create a text box let's insert a table table insert table body rows to 15 columns to 2 let's extend this all the way to the bottom margin Head over to window, type in tables, table. We can open the table panel. Select all of the table. And I want to make the first column wider. I can change the value from the tables panel or I can double click on the vertical stroke in between the column and drag towards the right. So roughly 62, uh, maybe 68, so that way we don't need that much of a big space for the price. And now we can make the price narrower. Okay, now we can select everything and set the row height to be at least, let's say maybe 15 millimeters work. 13, that looks better. So there is no plus sign at the bottom um, right corner. That means that it fits, the table fits in the text box. And I just want to change the inset here to zero to make sure that all the text is placed at the beginning of every cell. Now I want to get rid of the black stroke of the table. So select the whole table, head over to the options bar and make sure that all of the edges are selected here on the little table map. Set the stroke to none. And there we have it. So let's add a section name. You can put starters on the paragraph style, set the style to menu title. Just want to copy and paste here. Menu item. And now we just need a description. So something a little bit longer. Copy, paste here, selected, and set the menu description style. Maybe something a little bit just a little bit longer. Select the price column by going to the very top, wait until you see the arrow selected and set it to menu item since that's the style I want to use for the price. And let's add 12. So we have all the essentials that we need to design the rest of the trifold menu. In the next lesson, we'll show you how to design the rest of the menu and how you can create a story uh, by using the six panels on a trifold brochure. I'll see you there. Hi there, and welcome back to this course. In the last lesson, we added color swatches, paragraph styles, and tables for a trifold menu. And in this lesson, we'll finish designing it with the help of storytelling. Let's take a look. So here on our table, I've added a few more menu items and descriptions using the placeholder text. Let's add a new section down here, leaving a cell in between the content and style it with paragraph styles panel. I'll just copy and paste the information that we have at the top. And here, it would be nice to have a little break from the content. So maybe we can add a photo. Navigate to the assets of the trifold brochure and select the tomato soup image. You can drag this from the window and drop it into InDesign. And here I'll just click to place it. Resize the image to meet the bleeds at the top and the bottom. And then to fit the second panel, the width of the second panel. Using the direct selection tool, click on this circle and you can move the image around. Perfect. So this gives us a break in between the text that we have uh, for the menu. It's a great way to display maybe something that's on the menu uh, to present it to people visually. Now let's set the third panel. And here I'll just press Option and drag the text box towards the third panel. Since this panel is smaller, uh, we have to resize the column. Double click on the stroke in between the two columns and drag towards the center so we can resize it. Here I'll add different sections. Not every restaurant has only six things on the menu or, you know, you want it to look a little bit different compared to the 
the first panel, at least for looks, and then people can edit it as they need. So I'll add a couple more here, a new section for desserts. And that's it, that's our inside panel. So we have plenty of space here to display the dishes. We have an image, which is a nice break in between the two panels. It also works to entice people to order it and just reinforces that this is a restaurant menu and not just um, a marketing brochure, let's say. So let's head over to now the first spread, panels one through three. The first panel is the panel that folds in. The second panel is the back, and the third panel is the cover of the menu. Here is where storytelling comes in handy because we can play with the images and the placement of the rest of the information. Navigate to the trifold brochure folder where you have the images, and here I'll pick up the server with the two wine glasses. Drop it into InDesign. Resize this to fit the one panel, the first panel. Use the direct selection tool, A on your keyboard, and let's place this image a little bit better so we can take full advantage of it. Since the inside of the panel is white, maybe a black color on the outside would be good. Uh, black is very versatile, it's elegant, and this is the, the kind of vibe that we're going for with this trifold. Using the rectangle tool, draw a rectangle to fit the second and third panel. Make sure that you're touching the bleeds. Select these two elements, head over to the layers panel and move them to the background and images layer so we can work on the top for the content. The same for the inside panel and let's lock the layer. Now let's work on the content. Copy one of the tables from the inside brochure and paste it on the outside, command C and command V. Place the table on the second panel Zoom in here and change this to drinks and this to cocktails. So since we use black for the menu items, we'll have to change these to white. We can do so manually by selecting every single item for the price. Since everything um, is black and we have to change it to white, you can select the whole column. Press J on your keyboard to activate the color for the type and select paper. We can also create a new paragraph style um, now that we've changed the color to white here. So select part of the text of the menu item, head over to the paragraph styles panel and add a new style. Here we can change the style name to menu item white and click OK. Head back to the table on the second panel here restyle everything to the menu item white. Let's copy and paste some of this content down here and let's extend the table as well. Perfect. Since we created a new style for the white text, we can change now the uh, price column as well. Now let's work on the front cover. Head over to the folder with the images for this trifold brochure and select the table set image. Drag and drop it into InDesign. And here I just want it to fit in between the margins. I want to extend this image a little bit more but focus on the key elements. Using the selection tool, make the image longer and then press A to use the direct selection tool and with this tool, make the image bigger. Hold down shift to resize it evenly. Here, I just want to move it a little bit to find a good crop. And now we can add some text. Using the text tool, create a text box over the image. The name of the bar restaurant will be 3030. Use the paragraph styles to style the name with the restaurant name style. On the second line, I will add kitchen and bar and I'll use the restaurant tag or description style for this. The last line looks a little bit too tight, so maybe we can add some tracking to let it breathe. Double click on restaurant tag or description. Head over to the basic character formats. I'll move the window here so you can see the changes. Let's set the tracking to 200. That looks better. 
click OK, add a new text box under the image. And here we can have party room reservations and a phone number. Style this with a telephone and address style. And we can center the image. Make sure that you have the smart guides activated so it can help you center things evenly. You can see the green arrows that is a lot of help when you're trying to align things in InDesign. Perfect. So we have designed the inside and the outside of the trifold menu. Using the tables, we kept everything very organized and neat. Everything has the same distance. So it looks very consistent uh, throughout all six panels. We use black on the outside and white on the inside. And that, that's a nice contrast to have when people open the menu. Now that we're done with the design of this restaurant menu template, I will show you how you can export the file for professional printing and how you can package this as a template. I'll see you in the next lesson. Hi there, and welcome back to this course. This is the last lesson for this course, and we'll be preparing our file for professional printing and packaging um, if you would like to distribute it as a template. So in InDesign, make sure that all of the images and the backgrounds that are meant to be off the edge are touching the bleeds. We don't want any white lines on our final product. So this is looking good. And just to recap, we have six panels and each one is a different page. We will be exporting this document as spreads with crop marks that will work as fold marks so the printer knows where to fold. So head over to File, Export or Command E on your keyboard. Here, I just want to create a PDF folder. Make sure that you have the format as Adobe PDF print. Under Adobe PDF preset, select the press quality option. Under pages, select export as spreads. So we'll have two spreads. Under marks and bleeds, make sure that you have used document bleed settings checked. Select crop marks and click on export. Let's head over to the folder. And here we have the final PDF with the crop marks that are actually um, fold marks. The ones that are dividing the panels and then the ones at the corner, those are actual crop marks that are meant to tell the printer where to crop. And then you can send this file to your printer. Now let's say you want to monetize your assets and you want to distribute this as a template or simply you're sending this file to a client or to another designer and you want to have all of the fonts and all of the images in one place. You can also package this. Head over to File Package and make sure to check the fonts that are being used, if there are any files missing, how many links there are, making sure that all of the items that you're using are going to be packaged. Click on Package, Save, select a folder. Make sure that you have checked the copy fonts, linked graphics. Make sure to include the IDML files so the file can be opened in earlier versions of Adobe InDesign. Click Package, OK. And here we have our final package. We have the trifold menu PDF, which you might need it, you might not. The two InDesign files, one for CC and one for earlier versions. The links with the images and the font. In the next video, we will recap what we have learned in this course. I'll see you there. Hi there, and welcome back to this final video. Let's recap the lessons learned in the restaurant menu template course. We started out by learning how to edit a restaurant menu template to get familiar with the setup. And Vital Elements has a great library of templates that you or your clients can use, so it's worth checking out. In this course, you learned how to set up a single menu card file. We've included three and two columns, so you can have a variation on the layout. You also learned how to set up a trifold brochure. With a simple equation we show you, you will be able to successfully set up a trifle brochure document. The pages panel and the master pages uh, are very handy for this as you can group the panels into two spreads. That way you can see 
the best way to design the trifold for sure. Uh, by using the layers panel, paragraph styles panel, and color swatches, we were able to successfully set up both of our documents. Menu templates highly benefit from using guides to design a clean and cohesive layout. The tables option is often overlooked in InDesign, and in this course, they worked as a backbone for the restaurant menu template. We use the tables for both the menu card and trifold brochure, and this makes it easier to input information in an orderly way. It also makes sure that everything is evenly spaced out. You also learn how to export a PDF file for professional printing, and last, how to package an InDesign file for distribution. So if you're planning on designing templates as assets, this is a great way to make sure that all the links are gathered in one place. And just as a reminder, make sure that if you're planning on distributing templates for profit, make sure that you can legally distribute the images and the fonts that you've included. We have created two awesome restaurant menu templates. They are both very different in style and feel for two different restaurants. From all of us at Envato, we hope you enjoyed this restaurant menu template course and we'll see you on the next one.